Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Today's video is going to be a variation on a prior video that I did on how to set a house on fire. This one we're going to change it up a little bit. So instead of lighting the house on fire, we're going to make it explode. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, and there we go. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so in this video, just like the other one, we only need two different objects. We need a house and then also some part that's going to serve as our trigger for the explosion. Just keep in mind when you're selecting your house that the script we're about to write, it looks for parts inside of the model. So for whatever house you choose, just make sure there's some parts inside of that model. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a script onto this part. So we're going to find it in the Explore menu and then click on the plus sign. Okay, the first thing we'll do is we'll create a reference for this part. So we'll say local button is equal to script dot parent. Okay, next we're going to create a reference for the house model. So we'll say local house is equal to game dot workspace dot and then the name of this model is basic family home. Next we'll work on making a function. We'll say local function and let's call it boom inside the parentheses we're going to take the parameter other part the first thing we're going to do inside this function is say local and then the name of the variable will be part parent and this is going to be equal to other part dot parent so what this is doing is whatever other part touches the button, it's going to store that in this variable called other part. And then we're looking at its parent to see if it belongs to a player. So if a player touches this part, likely it's either going to be a leg or a foot that gets stored in other part. And then by saying other part dot parent, we're using that leg or that foot to find the player it belongs to. After that, we're going to check to see if this player is a humanoid. So we're going to say local humanoid is going to be equal to part parent colon and then find first child which is a inside the parentheses we're going to put humanoid after that we're going to say if humanoid then next what we're going to do is use a for loop to loop through the model and check for parts and we're going to do that by saying for num comma child in pairs. Next we're going to reference our house model which is how we defined it up here. Then we're going to say colon get children. Inside the for loop the first thing we're going to do is check to see if that child is a part. So we're going to say if child colon is a inside the parentheses we're going to put part so if that child is a part, then what we're going to do is create an explosion. So we're going to say local explosion is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put explosion. Next, we're going to say explosion dot parent is going to be equal to game dot workspace. What we're going to do next is unanchor this part by saying child dot anchored is equal to false. Next we'll set the position of the explosion. So we'll say explosion dot position is equal to child dot position. And lastly what we'll do at the bottom here is we'll say button dot touched colon connect. Inside the parentheses will be the name of the function which is boom. Okay, let's go ahead and check it out and see if we made any mistakes. All right, so let me go ahead and touch the button and see if we have an explosion. Okay, so everything seems like it's working. This script would also work for any type of model. So if you don't want to do this for a house, but you have something else in mind, you could probably use the same script with maybe just a few minor adjustments. This is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.